When we're talking about controlling light, one of the most commonly used tools on studio lights is a barn door. And it's amazing. All the barn doors that you'll ever see and that you'll ever use so far all work the same. They all look a little bit like they have been constructed in Germany. They have parallel leaves and these leaves will go like this or they will go like this. And you can rotate them but the leaves remain always parallel. Now that seems an orderly idea. But our lighting doesn't always go like this. Much more often it may happen that the light comes from an angle. And then those barn doors may not do everything that you like them to do. Think of lighting a painting and that's where our idea came from. The light is up and you're shining it down and using such a normal, typical, standard barn door, when you use it to keep the light away from the wall and just keep it on the painting, you won't succeed because the barn doors will create this light and shadow shape on the wall, like a trapezoidal shape. So either you take the light away on the top of the painting or you happen to light the wall and you can't escape that. This brought us the idea of a different kind of barn door on which you can rotate all leaves, not only the big ones as I'm doing now, but also the small ones. You can also move them. And when we want to do this kind of light framing, then we don't want any extra light to go here and there. That's why we have on the little leaves here, helper leaves, and on the helper leaves we have helper helper leaves, and you don't even have to think about it. They work on their own because they're spring-loaded, and they will always keep the light box closed so that no light escapes. So that's one advantage of this little barn door that we originally created for use in museums, but it can be used on the small lights uh, for any other purpose also. Another problem with barn doors is that the black is never quite black. And even the blackest black will reflect light. So the barn door and the light is pointing this way and you get still some reflection from the inside of the barn door leaf. And it winds up where you don't want it. Or from this one, it winds up there. Usually not too strong, but sometimes it's disturbing. And of course, the rich Australians have a lighting truck and they can set up an extra stand and put a flag and cut that reflection out. But some of the poorer teams don't have the big lighting truck. And for them, we put a lip on the edge of this barn door. It doesn't eliminate, but it really cuts down some of that reflection going inside. The next thing is, if you look critically, the edge of your barn door is straight. But what you project on the wall is not straight. It has a little belly to it. So we took that into consideration and we made a negative belly that goes to the inside and now you can project a straight line on the wall. So there are many little thoughts in this. This is not really the barn door 
for the film student during the first week. It has many parts, and you have to learn about five minutes how to use it. And once you've done that, it can be a super useful tool, but it's a little bit like an owner-driver concept. If it's your own, you will take care of it and you'll have it forever. If it's thrown around a lot, thrown on the ground, it's relatively robust. But as opposed to most of our other equipment, if you really try, it is destructible. The leaves won't come off, but they can be bent. And there are just too many parts on it to make it a tool for the kangaroos to play with. But we're quite proud of it. And then, of course, what is the next logical step? We should have similar barn doors also for the larger lights. Would you make these barn doors also for other people's lights? Hmm, I don't know. Yeah. We have the patents on this, it's our idea, and sometimes I have to pretend to be a businessman and try to protect our ideas a little bit, keep them reserved for the people who work with us and with our lights and our friends. And thank you. <laughs>